Knock, knock. Um, excuse me, Dr. Christian? Yes, hello? Hi, I'm Laura Money. I'm from the College Department of Purchasing and Accounts. Oh, it's very nice to meet you, Laura. So, Dr. Christian, my boss sent me down here to see if there was anything that you need. Um, hold these. Uh, but I... Well, um, just for a minute. Okay. Uh, but whatever you do, don't mix them. Well, why not? Um, because they'll blow up the whole building. What? Uh, just kidding. Just a little science humor. Uh, or, so, or maybe not. So, Dr. Christian, I really just came down to see if there was anything that you need. Uh, that's awfully nice of you, Laura, but uh, Jesus has given me everything that I need. He has? Uh, th does that sound strange, coming from a science teacher? You know, I know many of my colleagues might not believe in God, but I do. Uh, and I love him. Uh, I know he's looking out for me. Uh, I know that he gives me comfort. I know that he's there when I need love. And... He's there when I'm sick. He's there when I need a friend. Oh, I see. Uh, yes, ma'am, God has given me a, a great family, a good friends, good health, and a great dog. Did you know that I have a dog? No, Dr. Uh, Christian, I didn't. Uh, it's Einstein, he's a labradoodle. No kidding. Yeah, so um, I appreciate your concern, but uh, I have everything I need because I have Jesus. Well, that's wonderful to hear, Dr. Christian, but I really was just here to know if you needed anything for your lab. Oh, oh the lab, the yes, lab, let yes, me see. The lab. Uh, a box of uh, test tubes, um, a gallon of sulfuric acid, and a little more gauze. Mm -hmm. Okay, gauze, gauze. Okay. I thank got, you. I got that. No, no, Dr. Christian, thank you. It's good to know that Jesus can give me everything that I need. Mm. Maybe I should have asked for another test tube holder. Hi, my name is Andrew, and today I'm going to show you how to make a soda geyser. 
For this experiment, we'll need a roll of Mentos, a two liter of Diet Coke, a piece of paper, and a little bit of tape. With our paper and our tape, we're going to make a little tube for all the Mentos. This experiment is going to make a big mess, so if possible, you may want to do it outside in the grass. Unwrap the roll of Mentos. Open the bottle of Diet Coke and set it on the ground. Drop the entire roll of unwrapped Mentos into the bottle. This little tube will help you make the perfect drop. Stand back and watch the fountain explode. We're using seven Mentos for the perfect explosion. Wow! Who would have thought that candy and soda would have such a huge reaction? Mentos aren't exactly the biggest candy on the market, but mixed with a soda, they create a huge eruption. In the story of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus showed us that he can take something small and turn it into something big. He took one boy's little lunch and he fed it to thousands. He met the needs of the people, and in doing so, he showed us that he could meet all of our needs too. What needs do you have this morning? Do you need a friend? A little comfort? A little love? Jesus is there, and he knows your needs before you ask. Jesus will always give us what we need because Jesus is all we need. Well, hey, boys and girls, here we are in the science lab. Science is so fun, isn't it? And you know, when we talk about science, science means a lot of different things to different people. Some people think of animals or biology when they hear the word science, and some people think about plants and photosynthesis. Some people think about astronomy or chemistry or physics. Some think about sending rockets into space or making airplanes fly. And then there are some people who think about dropping myths into a bottle of soda. You know, science can teach us a whole lot about our world and the way that things work. And thanks to science, we know that our bodies breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. While plants, they take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. And we know why certain chemicals react with other chemicals, and we know how to make things like rockets and airplanes fly. And science is always asking and answering questions, and it's always teaching us new things. But as many questions as science has answered, the question of the soda and the Mentos is one that science hasn't answered yet. And it's not because they haven't tried. As silly as it sounds, science experts have studied the reaction that takes place when this candy is dropped into soda and it mixes inside of that bottle. And none of them have yet been able to agree on why this reaction happens. Well, some people think it's a chemical reaction. That means that two different things, like mints and soda, they mix together to become something new. Other people think that it's purely a physical reaction, that the candy causes some gases in the soda to make lots of bubbles so rapidly that an explosion of water erupts as the gas tries to escape the bottle. Well, whether it's a chemical reaction or a physical reaction or something completely different, there's one thing that we can all agree on. A bunch of tiny candies dropped into a bottle created a big explosion of soda. And that big explosion, boys and girls, it's a visible picture of how God is able to meet all of our needs. Well, in today's story, it's a story about a day when Jesus saw some needs and he met them. See, there were thousands of people and they were getting hungry. And Jesus made sure that they all had a good meal and they all had enough to eat. Our story for today comes from our Bible, from the book of John, chapter 1, 
Verse, or chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. And here's what the Bible has to say. This is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000s. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. And then Jesus climbed a hill and he sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Well, Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people. They were coming and they were looking for him. And Jesus turned to Philip and he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all of these people? Now Jesus, he was just testing Philip because he, Jesus, he already knew what he was planning to do. And so Philip replied to Jesus and he said, even if we worked for months, there wouldn't be enough money to feed all these people. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, he spoke up and he said, look, here's a young boy with five loaves of bread and two fish. But what good is that with such a huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000, plus there were women and children. And then Jesus took the loaves and he gave thanks to God and he distributed them to the people. And after he did the same with the fish, and after they ate all, they ate as much as they wanted to. And after everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather up the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up all the pieces and there were so many pieces left that it filled up 12 baskets full of scraps that were left by the people who had eaten to their fill and the leftovers from the five barley loaves and the few fish. Wow. So boys and girls, here it was Jesus with this large crowd on a hill and it was late in the day and they had been out all day long and the people were hungry. And the disciples saw this and they told Jesus, Jesus sent them away. But Jesus, he had come to serve the people and to meet their needs, most especially their deepest need. And so on that day, Jesus demonstrated his love by meeting people's most basic need for hunger. And like the Mentos, Jesus took something small. He took a little boy's lunch and he made it into a meal that was big enough to feed a huge crowd of more than 5,000 people. You know, Jesus was always meeting the needs of people. He healed the blind and he cured the sick. He was a friend to the friendless. He was even a friend to that crooked tax collector named Zacchaeus. Jesus gave forgiveness to sinners. And that same Jesus, he's still meeting the needs of people like you and me today. He can meet any need that you have because Jesus is really all that you need. So what are our needs? What are the things that we need every day? We need food and water, and we need a place to sleep, and we need a roof over our head, and in the wintertime, we need warm clothes, don't we? But boys and girls, that's not all we need. We also need love and friendship and family, and we need a listening ear when we have questions. We need wisdom when we have tough choices to make, and we need comfort when our hearts are broken and we don't know where to turn. But most of all, we need forgiveness for our sins. That's for the things that we've done that hurt God and hurt people. And Jesus, he came to die for our sin. See, boys and girls, sin separates us from God. If this is us, this is God, then sin separates. And we need someone to bridge the gap between us and God. That's the biggest need that any of us have. And it's the first need that Jesus fills when we ask him to be our savior. But boys and girls, Jesus doesn't just stop there. Jesus can be a friend to the friendless and a comfort to the brokenhearted, and he can give wisdom to those who seek it. And Jesus, he can also figure out who we are. He knows that he has a purpose for our life. Jesus can give us direction for our life, and he has a special call on your life for you to serve him. See, Jesus has given us all gifts that he wants us to use for him, just like the little boy in the story with the lunch. And we can give our gifts to Jesus, and then Jesus, he will multiply them just like the soda explosion that we saw. So what needs do you have today? Do you need a friend? Do you need love? Could you use some wisdom for a hard decision you have to make? Or maybe some comfort for a sadness? Maybe today you just need a savior. Well, boys and girls, Jesus can meet all of those needs. 
And you know what the really cool thing is? He already knows them before you even ask. And Jesus, he delights in answering our prayers. So whatever's on your heart right now, you can give those needs to Jesus because Jesus is all that we ever really need. And so boys and girls, we're going to pray and talk to Jesus now about what it is that we need. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the story of the little boy that shared his lunch with you and how you made something big to meet so many needs. And Lord, when we come to you with our needs, you can meet our needs too. We thank you that you love us so much that you came to be our Savior, to meet our greatest need, which is the need to know our God in heaven, so that we would not be separated from him anymore. We thank you for your love, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And so, boys and girls and moms and dads, we want to remind you that we have some fun crafts and activities for you. And you know what? We've even got the directions for you if you would like to try this fun, explosive science experiment at home. So, boys and girls, I have just one more thing that I want to say to you today. I want to remind you that God loves you. Boys and girls, we're going to stand up now. We're going to sing the song called Power because Jesus, he has the power to do anything. But before we sing, boys and girls, it's time for us to say goodbye. So we'll see you next time. I hope you have a great week. Bye.